Happy winter, everybody. It's Miss Kathleen. I'm here at the Ephraim Historical Foundation. Today, let's learn about winter, then and now. Hello, I'm Miss Kathleen. And I'm Miss Marla. And we're from the Ephraim Historical Foundation. And we're here today to let you know a little bit about what Ephraim was like in the winters a long time ago. Normally we come in and we visit with you during the holiday season, but this year things are a little bit different, so we decided to bring you a very special program that would let you know, know more about the winter season. People got around differently then. Horses helped people clear snowy roads. At first, there were no cars in Door County. Then, about 100 years ago, the car was invented. Now, powerful trucks clear snowy roads for cars. Then and now, people have fun in winter. If it's brrr, cold enough, people ice skate. People have ice skated then and now. Let's think about how winter was different then compared to now. And I think, Marla, we're going to share a little bit about um, how people got around. Let's start with, gosh, what are these things? These look kind of strange, don't they? They do look strange. I know. Strange. They've got leather on the top and this metal thing. Does anybody recognize what these are? I know you do. Ice skates. These are really old ice skates, though. The ice skates that you might use up at Sister Bay during winter are going to look more like this. I think we need to polish these, though. Do you remember doing that as a kid? I Marla, certainly. I do, too. We kind of painted the white polish on our ice skates. I don't think kids do that anymore. We, we did. And the thing we'd like you to really notice, too, um, most kids did have skates. Kids were able to skate. However, um, you, it was harder because if you look at this, the only way it's adjustable are these little straps. Whereas in your more modern ice skates, you get them to size your foot so you have a lot more stability. So um, our old ice skaters, in days gone by, they really had to have a good sense of balance because they didn't have a whole lot keeping them on the skates. Who likes to go sledding? Now children sled on Hill 17 in Peninsula State Park. They sled on inner tubes. Then children went sledding along a path we now call Highway Q. What did sleds look like? Let's find out. Um, another way you got around on the frozen ice, and this also would be fun, and your parents could pull you when you were little, and as you were older your friends could pull you, was on a little sleigh. And this is a very little sleigh. A little bit later on, we're going to show you a much bigger sleigh. But even horses sometimes were hooked up to sleighs to pull goods around. Mm -hmm. um, we have to remember, we didn't have automobiles or trucks. We had horses, we had mule, and... Um, and your own two feet. And your That's own two feet. That's around, too. Exactly. Yeah. So um, you probably play on sleds today, but just know they had a much bigger purpose back in the day. Some sleds were small. Some sleds were big. Sleds are small. Today, children usually push and pull sleds. Sleighs are big. Horses often pull sleighs. Today, the word sled and sleigh can mean the same thing. Long ago, a sled and a sleigh were not exactly the same thing. Miss Marla and Miss Kathleen used both words in this video. Well, Marla, we saw that small red sleigh. This is a little bit different. It is a little bit different, and this sleigh is so much fun. Um, you may have seen sleighs like this still being used today in Ephraim. Mr. Maybury gives sleigh rides in the winter. But sleighs were a way for families to travel in the winters. You would hitch up your, your horse and um, you'd sit in your sleigh and you'd stay warm under blankets and perhaps sometimes even had foot warmers in there for you. And it could be fun to take a sleigh ride in the snow or it could get you from one house to another or to church on Sunday. Now, this is the Anderson sleigh. So the horses would be on what end? Or this end? Would have to and be. I don't see a steering wheel. Like a car has a steering wheel. How did they steer the sleigh? I think that they had to have... Hands? You know, whatever you hold a horse on. Reins? Reins. 
And they couldn't turn on the car heater if they got cold. So like you said, they had this blanket. This one's made of horse hair. Horse hair, my goodness. This looks like a fishing pole, but it isn't. What is this? I think this was to make, you know, crack the whip, have, oh, have the sure. horse, or just make a sound and the horse would start trotting. Sure. So the horse would be in front. These wooden bars would actually come down and the horse yes. would stand in between. Yes. Oh my gosh, how fun that must have been. And I think that bridle with the... The yeah. harness? Yeah, there's all these, see, look at all the things yes. right here on the wall. All this that might have all been used with the sleigh with the horses. Gosh, but you have to have snow. You have to have snow. photo, Marla, of um, Mr. Anderson, Oslog Anderson. Now, look how he's dressed. He's got a little bit of a fur collar. He's got a nice heavy suit. He's got, they would call these galoshes or boots. Those would be a snow boots with metal buckles. What did he not put on, though? He forgot his mittens. Forgot his mittens. And he, of course, he's got a hat because a lot of our heat escapes from our head, so you always want to have that hat on in winter. <sighs> it was fun, wasn't it, those days, Oslag? Yeah, absolutely. Another way people got around, especially if they were walking a distance, were on snowshoes. Then, snowshoes were made of wood. Now, snowshoes are made of metal. And notice that it's wide. Well, that's because if I step into the snowshoe and I walk with my snowshoes, my weight is spread over the snow. I won't sink down as much because my weight is spread out. So this is how people like Reverend Iverson, who uh, got the village of Ephraim started, and before that, even Native Americans traveled. They walked, and in the winter, they used snowshoes. Now let's look at what the pattern looks like. Let's look at what the snowshoe track looks like. Ready? One, two, three. There it is. Pretty nifty, huh? People like skiing in Door County then and now. These children are skiing near a church in Ephraim. Then people also skied down a huge ski jump in Peninsula State Park. Alas, the ski jump is no more. It is gone. Now people ski in the woods in Door County. Inside the Goodlitzen cabin are many interesting things. Of course, this time of year, winter, everything's tucked away. Except look what I found that has something to do with winter. A pair of skis, an old pair of wooden skis. The part where you put your boot in, this part right here, that's called the binding. And gosh, it's made of leather with some ties. Boy, things were made differently in the old days. When you go outside in winter, do you wear a bathing suit? Do you wear sandals? No. Then and now, people wear coats hats, and mittens in winter. Here is a woman holding a muff. So when you're playing outside in the snow or traveling about outside in the snow, you need to keep your hands warm. And we found something at the Anderson store we thought was really interesting. Little girls and women had muffs. They put their hands inside the muff. And this particular muff has a little teeny coin purse attached to it. So you could have a little something with you in your muff and you almost can't see it. It's a little decoration on there. The other um, interesting article that would keep you warm, we have scarves today, but this is a little fur collar that goes around your neck and it matches the muff and it also would keep you warm. But of course, on most days, you'd be using what Miss Kathleen has. 
Mittens. I bet these look a little bit like the mittens you wear today. These are made of wool and your mom would have made these for you. Then and now, snow falls in Door County. Snow falls near the Anderson Warehouse in winter. Winter is super de duper fun. Then and now. Thank you.